Number 10. This problem considers additional aspects of example calculating the effect of mass distribution on a merry-go-round. Letter A. How long does it take the father to give the merry-go-round an angular velocity of 1.5 radians per second? So here's the picture. Here's the dad applying an, a tangential force at a certain perpendicular distance relative to the axis of rotation. That sounds like torque to me. So we do have torque in the problem, right? And it also tells us some other information over here that I just kind of summed up in this picture. So tangential force applied at a perpendicular distance relative to the axis of rotation over here. So we know that this supplies a torque. It also has the, the uh, disc, essentially, which is the merry-go-round, has a certain mass. And we want to know how long it takes to obtain this angular velocity. So what we have to think about is we have to think about, well, how does torque connect to time, right? So the only thing I can really see is that I know torque connects to angular acceleration, right? Via this formula over here on the right-hand side. So this tells us, so this is letter A, this tells us that the sum of the torques will equal the moment of inertia of the object multiplied by the angular acceleration. Now the moment of inertia, you gotta be familiar. Most likely you'll be given these on your exam. I don't know though. Uh, you'd have to ask your specific professor about that, but most likely it's given. Uh, wasn't for me, so hopefully you have better luck than I do, or I had. And the moment of inertia here, uh, for every rotating body, every uh, rotating body that's different depending upon how the mass is distributed and the shape and whatnot, you'll have different uh, calculations involving moment of inertia. What I did down here on the right-hand side is I found the uh, item in your book, and that is right there, the moment of inertia I. The moment of inertia for a disc rotating about uh, its axis down the middle is mr squared over two, all right? So we know the mass, and we also know the particular radius um, of the disc. So uh, that being said, okay, we also know the torque. Remember, torque is equal to, this is going back to your other, you know, chapter. Torque is equal to F multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm, okay? So I know, let me backtrack, I know this and I know this, which means that I can calculate alpha, all right? But that still doesn't give me time, right? Let me first solve this for alpha because I know though I can get alpha from, excuse me, I know I can get time from alpha. All right, so alpha would be equal to the sum of the torques in the problem divided by the moment of inertia. Now you have to ask yourself, well, if I know the angular acceleration, I know also that it starts from uh, rest. How did we know that? Re we have to read the example, all right? Um, it doesn't consider the merry, let me just see if it's actually in there. If it's not, I mean, that's what we have to assume because it says how long does it take to get to this angular velocity and it doesn't tell us an initial. So let me see, produce when no one is on the merry-go-round, when the 18, okay, because the merry-go-round. Yeah, it doesn't actually say it, but we, we, we have to assume something. Uh, so the easiest set of assumptions is to assume that it's zero. All right, so the initial angular velocity is zero. The final angular velocity is going to be 1.50 radians per second. The time we're trying to find, the time is a question mark, and I do have alpha in this equation. So what I'm trying to do is think of an equation that relates these items together, and we do know what equation relates those, right? This is very similar to the linear analog. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Now, if I solve this thing for the acceleration, the angular acceleration, we would come up with this formula, right? Wf minus Wi all over T, excuse me, all over, uh, yeah, all over T. So what this does now is this formula right now allows me to take these terms and substitute them on in for alpha. And look, now I will have time in my equation, okay? A lot of physics professors will want you just to solve for the equation. They don't necessarily even want the number. All right, so I'm trying to show you a different way to do this. So omega, the final velocity minus the initial velocity all over time, all I did was substitute that in for alpha, just like what I mentioned, will equal then the sum of the torques in the problem 
all over the moment of inertia. Solving this thing for time now, and then we'll expand on some items. So we would get now a moment of inertia multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity, all divided by then the uh, sum of the torques, and that will equal, I'm going to put time on the uh, left hand side, that will equal the time, okay? Just cross multiplication basically, moving some variables around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on the uh, moment of inertia, as I spoke about before in the bottom right, and I'm going to expand on the torque, okay? So time will now simply be, so the moment of inertia was the mass multiplied by the radius squared all over 2. Okay, now this 2 can actually go on the bottom, so I'm going to leave that for now, um, meaning in the denominator. Then multiplied by the final angular velocity minus the initial, all divided then by the 2 is now down there, uh, 2 times then the sum of the torques. And remember, there's only one torque right now in the problem, so it's just that particular applied force from the dad multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm. And this is now the formula. So I'll just finish it on out. So let's just plug in the values. So the mass of the disc is 50 kilograms. The radius is 1.5. Actually, I mean, you can also simplify this right now, right? If, if I look, the radius up here is the same as the radi the perpendicular lever arm. So this radius will cancel with one of those, all right? So I'll use that simplified formula. So the one radius now at the top, 1.5, multiplied by the final angular velocity, which they told us was 1.50 radians per second minus the initial, which we assume to be zero, divided then by two times the applied force, and the force that the data is applying is 250 newtons. So the time here will now be, let's calculate that, so 50 times 1.5 times 1.5, and then divide that now by two times 250. So 0 0.225, so 0 0.0.225 seconds. All right, that's how fast it takes to get to that particular angular velocity. So that's letter A. Letter B, how many revolutions must he go through to generate this velocity? So basically they're just asking, you know, in this amount of time, given this final initial, uh, excuse me, this final uh, angular velocity, how many revolutions does it make? Talked about this in many, in a majority of the problems prior. Revolution is basically asking you to calculate for distance. When you're being asked for distance for a rotating body, you have to think that that's asking you for theta, okay? Theta is basically distance in um, uh, the angular analogs. The units of theta, though, are in radians, so we would have to do a conversion there, all right? But not a big deal. So think about what you're given. Think about what we know, right? We know the final, I'll just, again, we, I mean, I wrote down most of the givens over here. Okay, except now I also, I do know the time. So what I'll do here is I'll erase that little unknown there. And I'll plug in now the time of uh, 0 0.225. Okay, so we're being asked to find the, <clears throat> so we're being, sorry, so we're being asked to find the, um, the revolutions, which we'll find through theta. So now you have to ask yourself, all right, so I have theta over here. That's my unknown. Uh, how do I, can I calculate that by knowing the final velocity and the time um, without, the, uh, without the acceleration? Do we have a particular uh, formula that will do that? Sure, right? I mean, it's one of the simple ones, actually. We don't have to complicate it too much. So we, we do know that uh, basically this formula over here, right on the right-hand side, right? We can say that um, the, it tells us the average uh, velocity, right? That's the average angular velocity, but that's easy to find. I mean, average, you got two numbers to find the average, you just got to divide that by two, right? So this says that omega average will equal the change in theta over the change in time. So to find an average, you got two numbers, you add those two up and divide it by two. Averages should be pretty straightforward. So 1.5 plus zero over two is equal to then the theta, which is what we're trying to find, divided by the time, which was 0.225 seconds. All right. And now just solving this, it's fairly straightforward. We get a theta value now, and I'll do that. So uh, 1.5 divided by 2, then multiply that by 0.225. So we get a value here of about 0 
zero point one six nine one six nine and that's radians okay so that is not the final answer right that's in radians you got to convert that into revolution so we just have to take this value and divide that then by two pi all right to find the revolutions so divide that by two pi and now that will get us two times pi so it's only 0 0.0269 two, six, nine revolutions. That is the final answer. That's how many revolutions it goes through for letter B. Last but not least, letter C. If he exerts a slowing force of 300 newtons at a radius of 1.35 meters, how long would it take him to stop them? Okay. So now what we have to do is basically, I'm not going to solve the whole thing again. We have the formula over here. It's asking for how long, okay? Well, the one major difference though here, actually, let me go back, how long. Um, the one major difference here is, I'll write down letter C's formula on the bottom left. The one major difference is that, remember before, um, the R's in this equation were the same, right? The radius of the disc was 1.5 meters. And the perpendicular lever arm of where the force was being applied was also 1.5 meters. So I could cancel them out or cancel one of them out at least, right? But this time they're not the same. So you cannot cancel them. For example, I'll, I'll even, I'll put, I'm going to rewrite this, but put subscripts down there for, so that it defines it even better. This is the mass multiplied by the radius of the disc squared, okay? Multiplied them by the final angular velocity minus the initial. Okay. All divided by then the two times the force being applied. Multiplied then by the perpendicular lever arm for where the force is being applied. But in this time, this case, he's applying a 300 newton force at a radius of 1.35 meters away. So if I look at this picture, right, the force now moved, let's say, to here. Okay, so this is the new force, and that is going to be 300 newtons. And this distance from the axis of rotation is now going to be 1.35 meters. Okay, now we also know, so that should be, that should be cool. All right, so this is basically the formula we got to use. Now, if you notice, everything sounds good except maybe the initial angular velocity, because... We don't remember the context of the problem now is we're going to say, uh, actually, no, I apologize. We do know it because they, they gave it to us. So never mind. Um, I thought we had the calculator. I forgot that we were given it here. You have to just think about what's the you know initial and final frames of your problem. So the initial frame is now this, right, is going to be the initial velocity. And then we're trying to calculate how long it will take to slow down from this initial velocity to zero right? Because it's going to come to rest. It's going to stop them. That's what it says. So basically now all we need to do is plug in all the values here, okay? I know it's all over the place. Um, I'm just going to say them what I'm going to plug in, all right? And then I'll calculate it on my, on my uh, calculator. So the mass of the disk hasn't changed. That's 50. So 50 times the, uh, dist the, um, the radius of the disk, right? Which was 1.5 and that's squared. Then multiplied by the change in velocity. So the final velocity is zero minus the initial. Okay. So that's going to basically be, so it's multiplied by 1.5. Then divide this now by two pi, uh, excuse me, not two pi, divided by two times the force that's being applied, which is 300. Then multiply it by that perpendicular lever arm of 1.35. All right. And we know the time though has to be a positive value. So you can basically just take the you know, if, if, if you, if you got a negative term in here, just make it positive. Take the absolute value. It doesn't matter. You know, time cannot be negative. All right. So let's now write that down. So the time here for this is for letter C. So the time here will be equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.208 seconds. So it's actually slightly less than it takes to speed them up. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.